Matt Butcher-Grosso here, creator of Xenoplicity and the Q system it runs on. Um, today's video, we're going to talk about Shadowrun. It's a game that I like. Um, I think that it's a good game. Uh, but boy, does it have issues, okay? And and I think that that's true for every edition, uh, although I have not played every edition of the game. But let's talk about the editions I have uh, playing and that I own. Um, let's take a look at that. Let's go over here and pull it off the shelf. So this is the newest edition of the book, 6th uh, edition. They claim that this is a more streamlined, uh, simpler version of the game. I think that's hogwash. I don't think that it's any simpler. Uh, it's just complex, but in different ways. And so they failed at their mission because that's what they, uh, by their own admission, that's that's what their mission was. Uh, it is a smaller game book in, by comparison to 5th edition, which I'm always a fan of. Um, and 300 pages, which is what this comes in at, should be more than sufficient to put all the rules in the game and have lots of good artwork if you properly edit the book and you um, are, are you understand how a game should be designed, how it should be laid out. But these people don't know that. They are uh, ignorant to how you should put together a book. And, and I say that not because I hate on 6th edition, but because Shadowrun is just notorious for having bad book design, bad layout. Uh, they just don't know what they're doing. Uh, now, this is the edition that I play. It's 5th edition, okay? It is a much thicker book, um, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, now, you've watched this channel before you've seen my other videos where I talk about that you know that that's kind of like a stickler for me I don't like oversized books and so um, I mean I'm, and this is a big book admittedly this is book is what a 500 pages or something yeah almost 500 pages like 475 something like that so it is too big okay um, and yeah there's a lot of good artwork in this and they've got whole fold out pages and and um, you know things like that and and it's nice and cool to have like little collectible things like that in a book but the the core purpose of a game book is to be a textbook and a guidebook for playing a game. So it should be easy to reference, it should be easy to navigate, it should be easy to flip open and find things. And even this edition, the edition that I prefer, the edition that I like, this book is horrible at doing those things. Um, you will search for 15 to 30 minutes for something um, that you can't seem to find. And the reason why you can't seem to find it is because of how poorly designed and laid out this book is. It skips topics. And so uh, it'll bring something up and then, you know, 20 pages later or 100 pages later, or sometimes even like two or 300 pages later, it will go back into that subject. And and I get to some extent, you're going to get that in every uh, game book because you might have something mentioned in the rules, but then, ref, you know, you reference it in the, the gear chapter or section. I, I understand that you're going to get some of that, okay? Um, and yeah, that's why you have indexes and cable of contents and things like that. However, this book does it so poorly, okay? So Shadowrun is just bad for game design and bad layout. Um, however, to an extent, you can get around that, uh, especially if you don't use all the rules in the book, which frankly, I don't know anyone who does. I don't. I don't use all the rules that are in this book. You think I'm going to look up a rule in a 500 page book? I'm not doing that. Um, so what's more important is you understand the spirit of the game and then you make house rules based on what you know and understand about the system. Um, and you don't worry about what the book says is the right way to do something. You just you just run with it. You make a decision. You run with it as a game master. Um, and that way your game doesn't stop. It doesn't grind to a halt. You you have fun with your friends and you play the game and it's your game. It's your, your table. Table. So that's what really ultimately matters anyway. Um, so there's you can kind of get around that and you can kind of forgive it if they give you so much wealth of stuff in the book that uh, maybe it's just overkill. Well, you know, okay, fine. Uh, however, the book design, the book layout is poor, okay? It's poor in both editions. So this edition, even though it's smaller in pages, uh, it is every bit as difficult to try to find something in. Uh, and actually, there's some parts of it that seem to be missing. Uh, it is poorly edited. Um, and it is just, it's a real shame because a company like uh, Tops or Catalyst, you would think they would have the budget, the resources to put out a functional game book. Uh, to put out something that actually is useful and good and that the fans who they should be catering their product to actually enjoy their product and they don't seem to care about that at all. So in that way, they're kind of like WotC. Um, they don't they could care less about what their fans like or dislike. They're just going to put something out and they just hope everybody buys it. Um, and I, I got tricked into this. I, I, you know, I was such a fan of Shadowrun when, uh, when, during 5th edition. 
Um, and again, that's the edition that I started playing the game. So I was introduced to it while fifth edition was in print and um, I really liked it. I thought it was cool. It was different. Um, it, it definitely has its appeal. Uh, and you know, I like darker, grittier games. I like games that are set in a dark kind of dystopian future um, or even a present. Um, I, I've been a big fan of Vampire the Masquerade for years. And again, that's like gothic horror, goth, you know, gothic punk. Uh, kind of feel so cyber uh, I'm sorry Shadowrun seemed to really kind of um, meet that for me I love the cyberpunk kind of feel to the game and I also like that there's like fantasy species in it and the meta types um, and I really like that it also has magic and so you kind of have this really cool very unique futuristic world of uh, magic and tech uh, with with you know meta type uh, you know meta humanity and so um, I thought that was all really cool and interesting. And I, I like how like the whole world's been reformed and restructured from all this nonsense. So uh, I thought it had just so much appeal uh, when I started playing it. I was really kind of taken, uh, taken in by it. Um, and so when 6th edition came out, I thought, let's do this. Let's get these books. And so I got, you can see there on the shelf, I got the, the beginner box and I got the core rule book and I got the campaign books that were coming out. And I, I've never been so disappointed in a product that um, I had, you know, um, put invested things into because uh, what this is, it's unplayable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, and and so here's, here's my gripes with it, okay? Um, number one. They say it's simpler, but it's not. Like I said earlier, this is a, it's just complex, but just in different ways. Uh, because the, what they did was they rewrote the system and I don't think they play tested it. I don't think they play tested it at all. I don't think there was any play testing done with this book. And I, let me explain. Uh, so normally uh, in Shadowrun 5th edition, uh, your melee weapons, your strength will add to your damage of your melee. And this is a common thing that you will see done in uh, tabletop games because it makes sense, right? Uh, if you're stronger, you're going to do more damage with a sword or an axe than if you're weaker. Um, makes perfect sense. And so across the board, you see games do this, right? Well, in 6th edition, and I don't know if this was an oversight or if they just thought this was clever, um, but they took that out. So your, your, your melee weapons... Your strength doesn't add any to the damage. As a matter of fact, it actually kind of makes strength a dump stat because you could be this super awesome sword wielding, uh, sword sword wielding, um, you know, warrior and have strength one and just and be able to deal just as much damage as someone with strength six, uh, or strength ten or whatever. And and that blows my mind. Like I don't understand how that got past playtesting because it's awful. Um, another example of, of, of this is just, it seems like it wasn't play tested. It wasn't well thought out. Um, when you're making a character in Shadowrun, at least in fifth edition and in six, there's a priority table. So you decide what's the most important aspects that you're going to put points in with your character and what's the least important. And so depending on how, you know, where you put, uh, various things that you're going to make your character out of uh, along this, these priorities, it will tell you how many points you get to spend, uh, with like a point by kind of thing. So, uh, for instance, if uh, you wanted to play like, uh, certain species, certain meta types of, uh, you know, humanity, then you would have to pick, like, you'd have to put that high on your priority. If you just want to play a human and you don't care about any of that, you can put, you know, the, the meta type really low on the priority. Um, if you want to have a lot of um, attribute points, you have to put that high on the priority. If you want to have, if you don't care about attribute points, you can put that low. And skills work the same way. You get what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> in previous editions, like in fifth edition, um, attributes are more expensive than skills. And that makes sense. And that's similar also in like something like a White Wolf product like Vampire the Masquerade is the same thing. Attributes, uh, because you have less of them and because they're, they're more broad in scope uh, in, in what they can do uh, and what they're applied to, they tend to cost more with experience because, again, you're, you're leveling up. You don't really level up. There's no levels. But you're advancing aspects of your character, you know, with, with experience points. Or in the case of Shadowrun, Karma. Well, here's the thing. In 6th edition, uh, they made attributes and skills the same cost. There's no difference in experience cost. And so you might be wondering, well, what is the... What, it, 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 it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense from a character creation standpoint because it kind of nullifies the purpose of the priority system uh, in that regard. But also just from a, an advancement 
point of view. Uh, you're able to level up attributes and skills at the same cost. Well, then you would always level up an attribute over a skill because that attribute and a skill is what makes your dice pool. And so it it's um, it's it's that and it's like that. It's examples like that and a thousand or more things like that uh, that, that just make this uh, to me an unplayable game. Probably the, the biggest grievance I have with 6th edition is something that I actually have an issue with 5th edition. And 6th edition took that same idea and made it even worse. And that is Edge. So Edge is kind of like your luck stat in Shadowrun. If you've never played Shadowrun before. Um, and in 5th edition here, there is a list. There's a long list of things that you can spend it on. Uh, well, I say long. It's decent sized. Um, it's more than a few. Uh, of ways you can spend edge and I dislike that because again anytime there's more than one or two ways to spend a resource in a game people tend to forget about all the ways they can spend it and so it's something that constantly has to be looked up it constantly has to be referenced there's constantly people asking questions about it in the game it breaks immersion it's not a good game mechanic to have a resource that can be spent in a multitude of ways right um, it's just bad game design um, Shadowrun did that Sixth edition comes along and adds to that. They rework the way Edge works. So now it's something totally different. Now it's this whole like little mini game within the game where uh, it's like something that happens turn to turn, combat to combat, scene to scene. You're building up Edge or you're losing Edge. So with now instead of just playing the game and role playing your character, you have to, to, to kind of put that on pause and worry about this little uh, tug of war thing that's happening at the same time before every fight, before every turn. And I tell you what, it's it's not something you should do. It's not usable. And again, it's why you shouldn't play this game. This game sucks, okay? Um, but anyway, so they do this. And then on top of that, and on top of the fact that it's a slow-moving mechanic that bogs down gameplay, okay, and takes you out of the fun, on top of that, they also give you a list. And I'm not even joking. It's like something like 12 or 13 options that you can spend edge points on. And it's not even that it's just 12 or 13 things that you can do with one one point of edge it's that one point of edge will do these number of things and two points of edge can do these number of things and three points of edge can do this number and let me tell you something um that is compounding an already problem okay um so it's not usable and I would, I, when I first started really looking at this book and I thought, okay, well, how can I make this work? Because I bought all these books. I don't want to just not ever play this game. Um, so I'm thinking, how can I use this? And so I, thought, I started thinking, okay, well, you know what? I'll just scrap the edge system or I'll just use the edge system from 5th edition uh, and kind of how I homebrew it anyway. Um, and, and then, nope, I can't do that. You know why I can't do that? Because the edge mini game is factored into the rules throughout the whole game. So they've made this mechanic like they've they've kind of like welded it to the core mechanic in a way where I can't just strip away that part of it. I have to use it all or none of it um, without having to basically m make my own version of Shadowrun. And I'm not doing that. Uh, too much work, too much time. Something else that they did uh, that really grinds my gears is that in 6th edition, they changed some of the wording in the book. Uh, in previous editions, you had these various spirits that you could summon, air, earth, fire, water, you know, elemental spirits. You also had spirits of beasts, you know, like animal spirits. And then you had spirits of man. Uh, and what, what was meant by that was mankind. You had spirits of mankind. I always took that uh, like visually to be like ghosts and wraiths, specters, that kind of thing, right, of deceased people. Um, or at least a semblance of, of them from the afterlife. Well, they did away with that. They, they stopped the spirit of man because I guess they deemed it to be problematic. So instead they changed it to spirit of kin. Uh, it's a kindred spirit. Um, and I, I gotta tell you, I got no patience for companies that try to bend the knee and go woke and they wanna change words and change terms to prevent someone from being offended. Uh, I got, here's the thing, uh, nobody, was offended that it was the spirit of man was in the game. Nobody, nobody ever complained about it. No one ever was offended by it. Um, maybe there was some loser idiot on Reddit 
uh, that was offended and wanted to make a, 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 a thing about it. Maybe they were on Twitter and they tweeted something mean or stupid about it. But those people don't buy your products, Catalyst. They don't care. Um, that's not your fan base, okay? Your fan base was perfectly fine the way the system was, the way the words were. No one was offended. Uh, Shadowrun's been around for a long time and no one cared that the term spirit of man was in use, okay? So it, you're creating a problem where one doesn't exist and the fact that you were willing and able to change that and yet you didn't fix the actual problems with the game system itself, with the mechanics, uh, that you didn't proofread your book and properly edit it. Uh, I got no patience if you want to try to word police uh, a term like man in the game, but you, you don't have time to actually make a playable, functional game system that the fans enjoy, right? Because what that tells me is you're focused on all the wrong stuff. As, as little and small of a detail that is, um, you paid enough attention to the mechanics and to the words uh, and to the game itself to recognize that you needed to change man to kin. Uh, so if you had that kind of attention to detail, you should have had enough attention to detail to actually fix the mechanics and to make sure that the lore was fully fleshed out in the core book and also to make sure that the game was playable, functional, readable, uh, and that it was a worthwhile product to put out when you put it out. Um, but you didn't, right? Because you didn't care about actually what matters. You only cared about virtue signaling and, and trying to appease the woke audience, the woke crowd that don't even play your game to begin with, okay? Um, I've never met one. I've never met someone that was offended uh, that played Shadowrun about that term, ever. And so uh, just one more reason to not play 6th edition. So... Uh uh, I say all that to say this. Sixth edition is a terrible game. You should never buy it. You should never play it. If you want to play Shadowrun, get into one of the previous editions. I would tell you to get into fifth edition because it's the one that I like the best. Uh, from from what I've seen and read, I think uh, it probably is, uh, is going to be the best fit. But that's just my opinion. Uh, and, and here's the thing. I mean, there are people that will say up and down first or second edition is the way to go. Uh, but you know, a lot of people tend to say third edition is the best. I've never had the privilege of playing third edition uh, and I don't own the third edition. So I really can't comment on whether or not third edition is better or worse. Um, fourth edition seems to have a decent following to some extent from what I see online. Uh, but the thing is, is what I've been told, and I may be wrong about this, so correct me if I am, uh, in the comments, but, um, my understanding is, is that fifth edition is essentially, um, fourth edition but cleaned up and and has a, a more true authentic feeling to what uh third edition was so i don't I, again i don't know if that's 100 percent accurate uh because again i don't own those other products but what i will tell you is i, I think the setting and the feel and the flavor of the fifth edition book feels good and that that's what i'm going for um and Something else that 6th edition does that uh, that I think is kind of unforgivable is yeah, I, I like that they try to stream, streamline it, but you don't streamline it, streamline it to the point where you lose the feel and flavor of the game that it is. And that's unfortunately 6th edition just to me, it feels very bland when I try to read it. Um, it's monotonous, it's bland. Even the artwork just doesn't seem to be as authentic and true to the feel of a Shadowrun world that, uh, that I want to get. Um, so I'm just not, a, I'm, I can't get behind it. I really can't. Um, and on top of that, the bad editing, uh, the artwork I'm not a fan of, uh, and then just the glaring mechanical issues with the system itself, uh, to me, it's just unforgivable. So forget that nonsense. A couple of years ago, I guess they came out with another game called Shadowrun Anarchy, which essentially is the Shadowrun game, but with a totally new game dice mechanic uh, that was supposed to be more streamlined and simpler. So you see a theme here. The, the, the people that own Shadowrun keep on trying to produce a game that is Shadowrun, but light. Uh, Shadowrun, but just different. And I don't, I, here's the thing. The core mechanic of Shadowrun is not complicated. It's not complex. It doesn't need to be streamlined or reduced any any at all. Okay, it, here it is. It's really simple. You take so, so many dice of an attribute and so many dice of a skill. You put them together. You roll the dice. Fives and sixes are hits. Uh, and you're trying to reach either a threshold of successes to succeed in an action. Or you're trying to beat an opposed roll. You're trying to beat uh, however many hits you get on yours. It's supposed to be more than what the uh, opposition gets on their roll. That's it. 
That's 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 the mechanic of Shadowrun. And it is not a complex system. As a matter of fact, it's super simp simple. It's super easy. I can explain it in a paragraph or less of words. So why do I need three or 500 pages? I don't. I don't need that. Um, and what they do is, is they take that core mechanic and then they, they put, they pile on top of that layer upon layer upon layer of complexity. Um, and I get that you're trying to, you know, and, and part of the, the fun of Shadowrun that I get is the shopping, is the, is the like decking your guy out or decking your car out or decking your, your cyber deck out. Um, all of those things are fine, but they could, you could still do it in a more, um, you know, uh, streamlined approach without losing the system or throwing out the baby with the bathwater. And unfortunately, they they every it seems like they just don't get that. So they came up with this new game, uh, Shadowrun Anarchy, which is just a totally different game system. I've read through it. To me, it seems every bit as complicated, if not more complicated in some ways. Uh, and it, again, it's because they're trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just, it doesn't, it, it isn't what it's supposed to be. Um, and I just... I just, uh, it's just the worst. It's terrible. Um, so you don't need to throw out all the complexity. Well, all you need to do is just take the game of Shadowrun and you as the game master, you just use the level of complexity that you feel comfortable with. Um, to give you an example, right? So when I'm playing, when I'm running a, a Shadowrun game, I don't use every rule in the book. Uh, but there's a player, I always insist that every player at the table play a different role in the group. That way everyone can specialize in something and you kind of get that Ocean's Eleven kind of feel to your heist and to your, uh, to your um, you know, plots and whatnot. Um, and so, you know, let's say that you have a, you have a decker, one of the people is a decker, they want to they wanna hack things in the game. I'm not going to use every rule in this 500 page book uh, for how to hack. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, I use enough of the rules to, to give them the feel of what it is that the, the game is going for. I'm gonna have them roll their attribute and skill. They're gonna get their big dice pull together. They're gonna roll it. They're gonna count up their hits, uh, you know, check for their glitches or critical glitches. Um, and, you know, on my end, I'm still rolling the opposition roll, okay? Uh, but I don't need to look up all the, the, the minutia. So for instance, um, okay, so let me give you an, let me give you an example. Let's say uh, uh, Decker in the group wants to hack something. Uh, they want to hack into a, um, um, a system and turn off the cameras. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to say, all right, well, you still got you to you gotta hack into that host. You're going to have to, um, you know, get so many marks. And the way, I, the way I visualize it in my own head is a Mark IV, obviously, is an owner. So a Mark III is going to be management. A Mark II is going to be uh, an employee. A Mark I is going to be a guest um, or, you know, or someone just visiting. Um, and so kind of using that as a guideline, I'm going to say, okay, well, if you want to turn off the cameras to the facility, you're going to have to have three marks. So we're going to make those rolls and they're going to be trying to get those marks, you know, while hacking the system. And, you know, maybe they do, maybe they don't, maybe they, they screw up. I'm rolling for the grid overwatch. Okay. Um, you know, and, and keeping uh, track of their score up to that 40 mark where, um, you know, basically they get booted out and some kind of SWAT task, uh, task force team is going to get alerted to their presence in the real world. And so maybe they, maybe they get raided or something if they stick around in that same spot too long. Um, I'll do those things, right? Uh, but if they get their three marks and then they want to spend a, spend a turn or two turning off the cameras in the facility, I'll let them do it. Um, and But at a certain point, uh, you know, because every 10 minutes or so, I'm rolling those 2d6 to add to their grid overwatch score. I'm counting up all the successes the opposition rolls are getting to add to their grid overwatch score. So at a certain point, w relatively quick, um, you know, with, with, you know, with them being at the table, they're going to have to log off because they don't want, uh, you know, the, the God, um, to come down on them, right? The grid overwatch division. Uh, and so, um, it keeps it in check. I've never once had an issue where a Decker spent like tons of time in the, in the matrix, uh, and they, they were just running a different game session from all everyone else. It's never happened. I've never even had an issue with it. Now, maybe if I followed all the rules, rules as written, and I, I looked up every single rule and I tried to do everything just like what the book lays it out, maybe I would run into that issue. But I don't do that because you shouldn't do that. You, you know, you, you take from, from a game what you can and what, what makes sense, and then you disregard what doesn't and what doesn't fit your, your level of complexity that you're comfortable with. 
And so, um, you know, they do that. And yeah, you know, maybe there's some minutia that I skipped over. But at the end of the day, guess what? The Decker got to hack the system. They got to turn off some cameras. Maybe some wackiness or some glitches happen. And maybe we have some wacky fun from that. Uh, but then they log out and then they join the group and we keep going down the hallway or whatever. And they, they do the mission. And uh, I treat I treat magic the same way. I treat, uh, you know, rigging the same way. So no matter what part of the game you're talking about, it's never too complex. Uh, probably the most complicated part of Shadowrun uh, that I can't really get around, no matter how much I try, is character creation. <laughs> because you have to follow the steps in there to make the character. Um, and so the best thing I can do with that is make a cheat sheet on what page to turn to for what. Because the book is a terrible, terrible layout for character creation because again it skips around uh, you know it's not intuitive where you find certain things to look up to fill out your character sheet um, and again, admittedly that's bad game design I'm not saying that Shadowrun has a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination what I am saying is you do not need to throw out the whole system and reinvent it with a sixth edition you don't need to throw out the whole system and then reinvent it with anarchy uh, it seems like Catalyst doesn't understand their own product um, and, and I would say that Shadowrun seems to have like a very, very, uh, fun, very loyal, um, very engaged fan base, uh, that is just basically beaten down and tired by, uh, the company that owns the product, never getting it right, never trying to, I, but I think fifth edition is a, at least on some level, uh, good because it gives you the tools you need to make it the game you want to make it. Uh, which I can't say the same thing about 6th edition. I can't. Um, and again, you streamline it too much, it loses the flavor and feel that it was going for at the beginning. Even if I wanted to just take from 6th edition what I wanted and leave out the rest, I can't because they've incorporated everything, including Edge, this new Edge mechanic, into every facet of the game. Um, it is truly awful. I hate it when games do this. Um, if you're going to make a new addition to your product, and you're going to go with new game mechanics, you better make sure they've been properly vetted and play tested. And this game, 6th edition, is not. So um, so anyway, I, I like 5th edition Shadowrun. I think it's a great game. Um, but it does have issues. Um, and again, and the, the issues that it has is that over complexity uh, where they try to just give you a rule for everything. And But here's an advantage. Look, as a game master, take from take what you want from a system and just leave out the rest, right? Um, I, I don't use a lot of environmental factors. Uh, if someone's shooting their gun, I'm not going to stop and think like, well, maybe the wind's too strong or uh, maybe the light rain can give them a... I don't care. I don't care. I, I just let them make the shot. I, I Yeah, I calculate recoil because that makes sense. And on some level, that's... There's a sense of uh, realism that I like that that adds to it that, you know, the more bullets you shoot, the less accurate the gun is. Um, so I'll incorporate some aspects that I like and that I'm comfortable with, but I'm not going to factor in like a thousand billion different modifiers. I'm just going to use what I like, what I think makes sense, um, and then I just ignore the rest. And guess what? I've had a ton of fun playing Shadowrun, and it feels like Shadowrun. And I've played in conventions before as a player. I've, I've sat at the table and watched professional GMs run a game of Shadowrun. And when I run it at my table, the players all have that same feeling that I get. Um, I make sure to replicate that. So it's not that I'm not true to the lore. I'm true, you know, I am true to the setting. I'm true to the lore. I'm true to the feel. Uh, that, that Shadowrun wants to get across. Uh, but my games aren't overly complicated and yours don't have to be either. But what you gotta do is you gotta make sure you say no to products that are just poorly made um, and that, that actually don't deliver on what they promise to deliver. And that's what this is. So um, don't get this ever. Just don't get it. Pick up an older copy of Shadowrun. Like I said, I can't recommend previous editions because um, I haven't played them. Um, so I, I wouldn't want to give you bad advice, but I can tell you that this here fifth edition, if you pick it up and you're willing to, uh, ignore and leave out the, the levels of complexity you're not comfortable with, you can play, you can pick up this game, you can play it. Um, there is a series of videos online, uh, just that cover little segments, uh, of Shadowrun, uh, the rules. So for a new game master, uh, for that, or that's getting into fifth edition, you can watch those little five or 10 minute videos uh, and they'll cover the various aspects of the rules. All you need, all you need to get started. Uh, and, and those do a better job than the book does. So again, the book has its own issues. All right. And again, I'm not going to try to make uh, excuses for that. 
uh, but it's still a good game. And it's one that I like to play. And I'd say about once every two years, we get a Shadowrun campaign going on and it, it runs for a good length of time uh, because it's, it gets so much fun. It's so much fun. You know, you're playing a criminal, getting into criminal activities. Uh, you know, you're not the good guys. Um, you know, it, the game actually encourages you to be evil or, or bad or to be selfish. Uh, and I, I like that because for what it is, that's just a very unique thing. You don't get that in a lot of games. So anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on Shadowrun. And um, let me know what you think in the comments below.